Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord God Almighty. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, Jesus. We give you glory, God. We honor your presence, God, today. The power of the Holy Spirit working in our, our lives. Have your God like we. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We give you praise, O oh God. You are refuge and strength, very from the help and trouble. We acknowledge your presence, God, in the midst of us today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord once again. It's Tuesday evening. Time to start off again with the word of God, breaking the bread of life. Give your word that is enriching for your spirit and life for your soul. So Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we're definitely honored to be able to do that, to receive his presence in our midst, his power working in our lives. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah to the lamb that was slain for the foundation of the world. We give God the glory and honor and the praise. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but today has been a beautiful, relaxful, peaceful day for me. And able to just soak in the presence of God through His Word and through the anointing and power of me to keep living in the freedom that's found in knowing Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I forgot to post my announcement today for the class, and I will hopefully people come on anyway, but if they don't, I'm still going to teach the word anyhow, because those who hear it later on will be enriched in their spirit from the word that God has given us to teach, to inspire, to edify, and build up the body of Christ. We're living in times where we need to be anchored in our faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to test and trial the tribulations in this life, and we have to know with confidence and boldness that we are heirs and joint heirs of Jesus Christ our Lord, that we have been delivered and set free by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we have the right to walk in the truth of God's Word. We have the right to declare His Word. We have the right to speak His Word over ourselves and our bodies become afflicted, our minds become confused. When different situations arise in our lives, we have the right to speak the word of God with confidence and boldness, knowing that it's he is working in our lives to keep us in a state of peace, even in obstacles and trials and tests that arise in our lives. Don't let those things get you in a tizzy. Don't get you confused. Don't, don't cause you get give up and just faint in adversity because first things are going to come. It's all part of life. We're going to have some things rise in our lives that was going to test our faith, but we have to know it, who we are and whose we are. And we have to know with confidence that it's the Lord that's at work in our lives, every day perfect the thing that concerns us. Sometimes we get into a place where things just doesn't seem like they're going to work out fine for it, but nevertheless, God is at work in you to will and to do according to his own good pleasure. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen. So we, I'm setting up my Google Meet right now. I don't know if anyone's going to come on or not, but I'm setting it up anyway. I do it each week. And I pray that it will be enriching, inspiring to those who hear the word tonight. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church we are the church with the body of Christ we have to have ears to hear when God begins to speak by his word in our spirits we got to have ears to hear and be willing to submit willing to be delivered and willing to change 
Change comes from the inside out when you submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Many times the devil wants to deceive you, want to manipulate, want to control you, make you think that God doesn't care about you, God doesn't hear you. But I come to declare to you tonight that God is on your side. He is the reigning king. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's just. He's faithful to hear his children's cry and deliver. God bless you, Pastor Denise. Thank you for joining in tonight. Amen. Amen. Lashonda, bless you. Amen. So let's go into a word of prayer. I'm going to read a devotion, a couple of devotions as I do each week. And I pray this be enriching to you. This morning, we had a prayer line and uh, for the Pilgrim Church family. And I tell you, it was such a blessing. The devotions that were uh, read today, because it was able to make us see problems the way God sees them in our lives. And know that he's in control to bring you through every situation victoriously. But you got to trust God in his word and believe that he's faithful to do what he's prompted to do in and through your life. Amen. So right now, let's go to the word of God. We're going to go to the word, word of prayer and then I'm going to go into devotion. So Father, in the name of Jesus Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You've shown yourself throughout the ages and time past, and you're the same God today, yesterday, and forever. You are the God who never changes. You're the God who keeps on doing great things for us, God. You do miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives, oh God, as we learn how to surrender to your Lordship, your authority. Father, tonight I ask that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Cleanse our hearts from all sin and iniquity. Purify our thought life that we have nothing to hinder us from receiving the word of God. Empower us to live in the liberty where Christ has made us free. That we walk by faith and not by sight. And I thank you, Lord God, that we, we who have ears, let us hear what the Spirit says to us as part of the body of Christ, the church. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Again. Amen. So we're going to go into our devotion right now. This morning I read from the book, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Make friends with your problems in your life. Make friends with your problems in your life. Though many things feel random and wrong, remember that I am sovereign over everything. I can fit everything into a pattern for good. Isn't that wonderful? Every problem can teach you something, transforming you little by little into the masterpiece I have created you to be. The very same problem can be a stumbling block over which you fall. If you react with distrust and defiance, the choice is up to you. You would have to choose many times each day whether to trust me or defy me. The best way to befriend your problems is to thank me for them. This simple act opens your mind to the possibilities of benefits flowing from your difficulties. I'm going to read that again. This simple act opens your mind to the possibilities of benefits flowing from your difficulties. You can even give persistent problems, nicknames, helping you to approach them with a familiarity rather than with dread. The next step is to introduce them to me. Enable me to embrace them in my loving presence. I will not necessarily remove your problems, but my wisdom is sufficient to bring good out of every one of them. That is so awesome to know that God knows how to bring good out of every problem that we face in our life, every situation, everything we encounter that tries to throw us for a loop, 
God says, I'm just that kind of God. I can call you to see the benefits flowing from your issues, from your problems. And God says, when you trust me and you begin to rely upon my strength, you'll find my wisdom on how to face and deal with your problems. That is so awesome. Glory to God. From the book, More of You, God. God, I'm entering into more of you and less of me. Today, in honor of you, I will give up food or an activity for the rest of this month. Lord Jesus, I love you so much. I just want to be saturated with your presence. I want to be closer to you, Father. I know the more I praise you, you come near. Lord, I want to decrease so you can increase in my life. There isn't any room for my selfishness nor my controlling attitude in your presence. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release all of my problems to you. Rain on me, Lord Jesus. Reveal to me, Father, more of you, God. That is so wonderful. Glory to God in the highest. It's amazing when we learn how to release our problems to the hand of the Lord. The Lord knows how to fix things for the good in your life. Cause things to work out for you that you would trust him all the more. So tonight we're going to go into our lesson. And we're talking about tonight the power of repentance. The power of repentance. Last week we discussed what God says about Jezebel. How people have that mindset of Jezebel to blame others for other things happening in their lives or situations arise in their lives. They feel like no one cares about them. They feel like they have a, a calling that's not being recognized. They have a gift or a talent that's not being used. So, so many different excuses that people have to make just to, in order to leave the church. And we have to recognize that that's the underlying issue that the enemy uses in your mindset to cause you to doubt God's ability to lead you forward into your purpose. We all have been created with purpose for purpose. In order to move forward in your purpose, you got to know what you've been recreated for. If you don't know what you've been created for, you need to get in the Word of God. Start looking in the Word of God and find something in the Word that identifies with who you are. There is a Word for every individual in the Word of God. I also want to, at this moment, send a condolences to my family and my daughter's grandmother passed away on last Tuesday night. She passed away, the one we prayed for last week. That same day I found out my mother's oldest brother passed away. Not only that, a cousin on my dad's side of the family passed away. And then that Friday, another cousin passed away from cancer. So this is how the things been going on in my life last week, since last week. It's been nothing but death after death after death. And I got to the place in myself where I couldn't even, didn't even know how to grieve anymore because it just... So many deaths been taking place the last year, and sometimes you just don't know how to grieve anymore. You become numb to death because you hear so much bad news of what happened. Someone afflicted with cancer. I have a cousin now afflicted with cancer. I mean, and, and people I know afflicted with cancer, and my sister got a friend that's passing that's passing away got cancer. So I mean, it's so much happening, and we have to get to the place where the word says, "Let not your heart be troubled." And that's a true statement. It's, it's okay to grieve. It's okay to have sorrow of the heart. But don't get stuck in the pattern of grief. These things are common in society. These things are destined to happen in our lives. And we have to learn how to rely on God's strength, His comforting grace, to carry us through the moments we feel the most pain and the hurt in our hearts. I guarantee that God himself will show up in your situation. 
He will give you the power to endure and the grace to carry you through and to overcome. All I found myself doing was shedding one tear because I was just in disbelief. Like, how could this happen back to back in our family? But one thing about it, we never understand the reason why God does what he does. We just got to accept it. That's why I read the devotion about problems. When you learn how to let God be in the middle of your problems, those problems does not define who you are or how you will get through life. You tell your problems who you are and the God you serve and that I will get through this victoriously. Yes. We have to trust God in His work. We say we trust God in His work. We say we're children of the Most High God. We say we have faith in God's work. We believe in God. Then we need to act like it. I heard T.D. Jake say yesterday about faith. He said a lot of people claim to have faith when things are going well in their life. But as soon as things are upside down in your life, their faith goes out the door. Are you one of those tonight where your faith is predicated on whether things are good in your life? You've got to have faith in God even when things are bad to get you through it. You cannot go through the tunnel of despair, anguish, and strife, and pain, and hurt, disappointment, discouragement in a tunnel and get stuck and settle in the middle of the tunnel. I've never seen a rest area in the middle of a tunnel. When you're driving through tunnels, at the end of the tunnel, you see a light shining to let you know that you're almost out of that thing. And that's the same way God does in our lives. His light shines through the tunnel to the end of the tunnel. But we don't see the light because we're distracted by the darkness, which is the problems in our lives. And when we learn how to see God in everything, your mindset begins to change. Your heart becomes content. Your faith grows in Christ Jesus. And your soul is anchored in Him. And every time we trust God's word, God says, lean not your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and he shall direct your path. He only directs the path of those who trust him. I talked about last week about the trust, the center beam in your life. If there's no trust factor in your life to uphold you, when you go to build a house or build a building, if there's no center beam in that place, Anything you do is going to just be to no avail because it's going to fall apart. Your life is the same way. If your life is not anchored in Jesus Christ, when things arise in your life, when Satan comes to test you and, and things come to shift you in your life, you're going to lose your mind. You're going to fall apart. But I found out through the storms and the trials and tribulations in my life, I have an anchor in Jesus Christ. And I found out in the midst of it all, he sustains me, he carries me, he keeps me secure in him, where I will not lose my mind. Amen. God bless those who just came on. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Amen. 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 We're going to get into our lesson right now, the power of repentance. The power of repentance. Last week we left, I was talking about blaming others for lack of submission and repentance was the counterattack against the godly and against godly authority. Jezebel's spirit is one that's so strong, who's stern, who's stubborn, who's rebellious, who's prideful, who's ignorant, and does not listen to the voice of God. And her spirit is a strong influence in a child of God, if you're not prayed up, she'll make your wrong seems right. She'll make you feel like everything you're doing against God is the way to live. And it's all a lie from the enemy to destroy you. One thing I found out from studying this lesson and teaching this for the last few months is the Jezebel spirit is a seducing spirit. It seduces you into rebellion. 
It seduces you into spiritual fornication and adultery. Because it does not want you to submit to God. It does not want you to be obedient to God, but it wants you to always be prideful, haughty, and arrogant. And the word says pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Sometimes we're blinded to the seductions of Jezebel attempting to work through us. You hear that? Sometimes we become blinded to the seducing spirit of Jezebel because her whole purpose is to stop the work of God from manifesting in your life. And what she does, she attempts to work through you through idol worship. This is what it's talking about. Seduction. Driven to idols. Things that you put before God in your life and you say you're a child of God. You say you worship the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with fire. Many believers say that over and over as a cliche to themselves, but have no power to walk in truth. I tell you, when God begins to speak to me sometimes, it blows my mind. Because I sit and I think, I think a lot. When I think about the body of Christ and how even in my own personal life sometimes I get distracted and tempted by the enemy, it leads me into a spirit of seduction. Living the things on television you should look at, looking at things on the computer you should look at. That's what the enemy does. Keep it real with yourself. You gotta be real with yourself. You know what your weakness is, you know what distracts you, what deters you from your focus. This morning, I prayer focus on the prayer line. We have a prayer focus every day. And the focus we had today was being focused on the call of God in your life. As we're engaging in consecration, we're, we're fasting for three days a week, whichever days you choose for the whole month of March. And as you're going through the time of consecration, you have to have focus. If you don't have focus, on the reason why you're consecrating, you can continue to focus in, in, in your, excuse me, <coughs> you're gonna concentrate in vain. Because you have no focus, the reason why you're consecrating. So it's empty, it's futile, it's, it doesn't have no value. Just waste of time. But when you consecrate, you get into your secret closet in the presence of God, and allow God to pour to you his wisdom, his knowledge, his word from the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct you in the direction that you can see from your mindset the trajectory God wants you to see to fulfill the call of your life. But we miss it because we get distracted and we call ourselves fasting. Let the phone ring. We we'll answer the call. <coughs> Excuse me. Let the phone ring. We we'll answer the call and, and get the gospel and talk about other folk, or just talking about foolishness. But yet you're in the consecration. Think about it. Many times we said we're gonna fast and pray to seek the face of God. Let somebody come knocking on your door. At the time you're going through your consecration, they distract you because Satan knows when you make up your mind to seek God's face, he has sent a person who does not care about seeking the face of God to come around at the right time you devote that time to worship God. Happens every time. Happens every time. And then you get to the place, you get distracted. Then you forget about what you were doing. Forget about the scriptures you were meditating on. Because now you have lost your focus. When you get to the place of consecration, you got to get to a place of solitary. With no distractions. Shut off the phone. Shut off the television. Unless you're watching something motivational about God on the television. That's going to stir you up in your faith. 
But if you know that you're going to turn to the soap operas, you're going to turn to other things on the television that does not have any value in your spirit, don't turn it on. Because we get to the place we say we're seeking God's face and we let the devil come into our lives to, the, to abort our purpose. I don't know where it's coming from, but God just put it into my spirit. Somebody needs to hear that. Because the word tells us, in Matthew chapter 6, you find it in chapter 6. Read the whole chapter. He says, he says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to stand on the street corners to be heard by men for their much speaking. For they have the reward, right? And then he said, you got those who love to pray in the synagogues to be seen for the approval of men. But then he said, but when you pray, enter into your secret closet after you have shut the door. Your father who sees in secret will reward thee openly. That's a promise. Because our promise is attached to our obedience and our consecration. Read Isaiah chapter 58 about fasting. Because God said, this is not the fast I've chosen to lift the bands of wicked, set the captive free, and all those different things. He, he said the clothes they're naked, taking the homeless, to all, feed the hungry, all those different things. We miss it. Because when we consecrate and fast and pray, we focus on ourselves and not what God wants to be done in our lives. So I want to give you this one nugget. When you go into consecration, find your favorite scripture. Begin to pray that scripture. Declare that scripture over your life and life of your family, over your church, over your leaders in your church, over our country, our nation. Declare the word of God and watch God begin to manifest his word because of your obedience. When we come together in one accord, with one mind and one purpose, God has to move. He has to answer according to his will. While you have been reading, has the Holy Spirit illuminated an area where you may allow the entrance of Jezebel to influence? Why don't you take a moment right now to examine your life? Why don't you do that? Just take a moment. Just evaluate yourself. As I've been teaching this book for the last three months, what has God revealed to you in your life that needs to be changed? What is it God has placed in your spirit to illuminate, to cleanse, and to purify in your heart? We all have something that's called a stronghold. A fortified place in our lives that the enemy set us up in a prison to keep us devoured. We have to recognize and identify what it is in our lives. And allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you how to change your mindset in dealing with that issue. And reason I said mindset because it's all originally here. The fortress is here. That fortified, secure place is right here. Remember I said a while back we all have a, a, a treasure box in our hearts. It's right there. Because your heart is attached to your heart is attached to your mind. So whatever your secret treasures are in your heart, it originated from a thought. And you took that thought and treasured it inside of your treasure box and refused to repent to let go. Listen to this. Why don't you take a few moments right now to examine your life? Do you identify with any of Jezebel's tendencies? Can you identify with anything that Jezebel has done in your life? The tendencies, the habits, the characteristics, the nature, the mindset. Can you identify with any area in your life 
Will you allow Jezebel to come into your heart to influence you? Think about it. We have to get to the place in ourselves. We recognize that I can't live without God, no matter what goes on in my life. I have to keep standing on the word of truth, knowing that the word that has set me free, and that I'm no longer bound by the enemy in my life. We have to get to the place in ourselves. We be real with ourselves. Sometimes you have to write a list of things in your life that you know it's not right. Sometimes you got to make a list and take that list, anoint that list, and burn it up. I've done that before. Because sometimes, I was in the church before, years ago, <clears throat> and the pastor had us all come to church and write a list of things in our lives we wanted God to break in our lives. The things we wanted God to change in our lives. So we made a whole list. And then he said, I want you to bring this up to the altar. And we're going to anoint those things. And we're going to pray that the fire of God consume those things and burn it up. So spiritually, the list was consumed by the Spirit. And he said, don't even pick it up and take it back no more. Because what you let go of it, you don't want to go back and get it again. Last week on the radio program, we were talking about this very uh, same point. About being a fool. And then how God deals with fools. And sometimes a fool is only crafty in his own eyes. But makes himself look stupid. A fool is a person who does things, who confess to be a child of God, been delivered, set free, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And once God delivers you from certain things, a fool goes back like a dog returned to his vomit. You ever seen a dog lick his vomit? A dog that got sick. I had a dog before. And the dog got sick from something he ate in the, in the yard. And then the dog spit it up. Then went back and licked the same stuff back up again. We do that to God. Every time you go back, to the thing you said God delivered you from. You're lying to yourself. You're deceiving your own self. Because God is not mocked, nor is he deceived. But whatever a man sow up, that should also reap. So you reap corrupt, you sow corrupt, you reap corruption. You sow righteousness, you reap righteousness. It's up to you to determine in yourself what impact I'm going to allow the enemy to have in my life. If I've been delivered from fornication, from adultery, from homosexuality, from lesbianism, from drunkenness, from lying, from stealing, from wickedness, if I've been delivered from the fruits of the flesh, then I don't need to go back and pick those things back up again. Just because I feel weak and feel vulnerable at the moment, in the heat of the moment, you don't have the right to go back to those things. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. At times you do control. Do you control? At times do you control? Or are you easily controlled? At times, do you feel like you're in control? That God is not in control of your life? And are you easily being controlled by other people? By the enemy? The enemy uses other people to control you. To seduce you, to entice you, to bait you, to lure you, to trap you. And when they come into your life, you need to recognize the spirit in the individual. Because you're not dealing with the person. You deal with the spirit behind the person. Because the enemy has many different forms and different ways he comes to test, try, and prove you. 
And he comes in a way where he knows you have not been seeking God. I say it again. When you stop seeking God, and you get into a weak state of mind, here comes the enemy to test, try, and prove you to fail. Because he knows you're at your weakened state. The you know one thing about being weak, Jesus became weak in the flesh. In the wilderness, right? Luke chapter 4, it talks about the story of Jesus being, being sent into the wilderness, right? He was sent into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. You hear that? He was weak in the wilderness being tested by the devil. But yet, because he's connected to the Father, the Holy Spirit strengthened him. So every time the enemy came with a test, he spoke the word. And the enemy had to flee. Just because you get weak sometimes does not mean you got to give in to the temptation. We choose. Here we go again. The word choose. Choices. Decisions. Whatever it is you decide to do, when the enemy comes knocking at your door, it's up to you. God says, I set for you life and death. Choose life and live. That you and your descendants may live. It's up to you to make a decisive decision to follow Jesus Christ. To make the right choice. If you happen to make a mistake, I'm not judging nobody, I'm not condemning nobody, but I'm going to tell you what the Word says. If you happen to make a mistake, repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Isn't that amazing? He says the kingdom of heaven. You know what a kingdom is? It's a jurisdiction. And in that area, it has colonies. And not only that, in their colonies, they have neighborhoods and citizens. So we have a king that rules over the kingdom. And Jesus says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven, God's ruling, his authority, his, his jurisdiction, is reigning in your life, is at hand. Here's another one. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack or slow to fulfill his promise, as some men count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but, but that all should reach or come to repentance. Let's go a little further in our book. Maybe you have been too passive. And allow the Jezebel to influence your decision. If you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, then he wants to illuminate the truth and lead you into repentance. We know when it's the Holy Spirit tugging in our hearts. But we get a guilty feeling in our hearts when we're out of order with God. Our conscience condemns us. We start feeling bad about what we've done wrong. If you really got a conscience, you're going to feel bad about when you do something wrong as a child of God. If you don't feel any type of conviction in your heart when you do wrong as a child of God, you need to check your salvation. Because they ever did, you've never really been saved. Because a true born believer that's in Christ Jesus 
is going to feel convicted when they out of order with God because of the relationship. We're connected to Jesus, to the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the relationship is a tight relationship that we have. The Father, Son, Holy Ghost dwelling in our lives. But if I don't feel any type of conviction, what I do wrong, most likely I'm not born again. We have a true child of God feels the tugging in their heart to come to repentance. Every time I make a mistake, if I say something I shouldn't have said, if I do something I shouldn't have done, I mistreated somebody I shouldn't have mistreated, my heart condemns me. But the word says if your conscience is not condemning you, God is still greater. Because he still has the power to draw you to conviction. If you have an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. God knows every person's heart. He knows every person's motives. He knows your intentions. He knows your desire. And he says, I will draw you to repentance. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. There's a drawing power through the Holy Spirit that's pulling at your heart to come to repentance. To get things right with God when you're out of order. So we got to hear the voice of God speaking. Don't allow the enemy to put earplugs in your ear. The enemy has some spiritual earplugs he put in your ears to drown out the voice of God. And it's called sin. He has sinful earplugs to make you turn a deaf ear to God's voice. And God is saying, I'm still there waiting on you to make up your mind before it's too late to repent. Let's go a little further. Repentance is one of the weapons against the enemy. You hear that? Repentance means to turn away. Turn from what you're doing wrong and go the other direction. So, for example, the prodigal son. He took his inheritance. We all know the story of the prodigal son. He took his inheritance. When he squandered all he had, Living a riotous life. He ended up losing everything. His friends, his possessions. Everything he had, he lost it. So he got hungry. Had no money to buy anything to eat. His heart was convicted. His mind thought, let's turn around and go home. Because he knew he should have never left the first place. So his mind said, you know what? I'm hungry. Let me go to the near merchant and see if he let me feed the pigs to get something to eat. He started feeding the swine and still had nothing to eat. So now he's filthy, he's dirty, and he's sorry. But one thing about it, he said to himself, my father's servants have it better than I do out here in this world where I'm at. What I can do is go home to my father and tell him, I'm no longer worthy to be called your child. Just make me as one of your higher servants. Because his heart was convicted. He knew he was out of order, so he had a repentful heart. But one thing about that story, just like Jesus says, his arms are open wide to receive you who has a repentful heart to come back to him. He will abundantly pardon you. He will take your sins from the east to the west to remember no more. The prodigal son's father stood out daily looking for his son to return. He expected him to come back home. And when he saw him afar off, he didn't wait for the son to come to him. I love Jesus. 
He ran to his son and embraced him and kissed him on his neck and brought him back home. And he said, put him on the best robe. Put a ring on his finger. See, the robe of his royalty. He was restored back to his royalty. The ring represents covenant. Because the covenant was broken between him and his father because of his sinful nature. But the father restored him. And then he threw a feast of celebration. Because his son who was dead is now alive. Who was lost is now found. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. That's what God does for you and me, my brother and my sister. When we come back to the Father in repentance, He's right there with His arms wide open, waiting on you to look for you where you are. He comes to you. The words that you draw near to Him, He'll draw nigh to you. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord God Almighty. When Jesus addressed the church of Thyatira, he said he gave Jezebel the opportunity to repent. But she did not. You hear that? She refused to repent. Jezebel sets up or sets us up to refuse the opportunities to repent. She blinds you. She makes the word of God obscure to you when you can't see it. And he holds your heart in a dark place where you can't receive it. Listen to this. We should not repent to the Lord for our sins and then harbor resentment and unforgiveness in our hearts. You hear that? We should not repent to the Lord for our sins. Then harbor resentment. You know what that is? Resentment. Still a form of anger. It's a form of unforgiveness. Because I refuse to let go. Resentment means I'm not letting go. I'm going to hold you accountable for how you mistreated me. So I'm going to hold it over your head every time I see you. I don't want to be in your presence. Don't have nothing to do with you. And unforgiveness in our hearts. So because of unforgiveness, we are dying going to hell. If we cannot forgive our brothers their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father forgive your trespasses. The more we harbor resentment and unforgiveness in our heart, refuse to let go of the offense that someone has done to us or we've done to ourselves, we're calling God a liar. And we're telling God, your grace wasn't good enough. The blood of Jesus can't cleanse me. I don't receive it. Often we are stubborn and refuse to open our spiritual eyes to the truth concerning our sinful nature. It says behavior in the book. But it goes to sinful nature. Because your behavior, the way you respond, the way you act, it connects to sinful nature. So if I refuse to allow the Spirit of God to open my eyes to see my offense that I have in my heart, that I have towards somebody else, that I'm dictating and being controlled and driven by my sinful nature. Many times we harbor resentment and bitterness because of unjust treatment from the past. You hear that? Don't have to be nothing present. They happen. But we hold it from the past. Such as stolen inheritance. Lies or slander. Unconfessed bitterness can steal joy. And breakthroughs. You hear that? If you don't repent, it is still your joy and your breakthrough. Your breakthrough can be just around the corner. And God is at the verge about to deliver you from something you've been praying for for a long time. Or that financial blessing you've been praying for just about to be released. Until you get stubborn. 
and refuse to listen to the voice of God and not see what the Holy Spirit is trying to show you to get you free. It can even cause us to lose future blessings. You hear that? Your stubbornness, your arrogancy, your pridefulness, your haughty heart, your rebellion, your ignorance, your stupidity, your sinful nature, your bad behavior, your bad mouth, your lying tongue, the wicked mindset can cause you to lose future blessings. That's what Jezebel wants in your life. She wants you to lose in every area of your life. Read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 to 18. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 to 18. True repentance involves change. True repentance involves letting go of resentment and unforgiveness and bitterness. Especially changing the mind. When you let go of the sin you harbor in your heart towards somebody else, even towards yourself, poor self-esteem, condemnation, bitterness towards yourself or towards things that happen in your life. You know, you know something? I've been around people in the body of Christ who says they've been saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost, been delivered from certain things in their life. And all they have is bad stuff to keep happening to them. And the more they complain and murmur and, and grumble about it, the more bad stuff happens. Because they didn't realize your murmuring, your complaining, and your grumbling, and your backbiting, your hating, talking about folk, backstabbing folk, all the stuff you do, it disconnects your power from the Holy Spirit. So you find yourself stuck in a dark place when God wants to deliver and set you free. There's no power to do it. Because you've been given so much negative energy, the influence in your life, you cannot receive the power. When God spoke to me concerning the power of the Holy Spirit, there was a slogan came out a few months ago on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Everybody said, Holy Spirit, activate. And I thought about that slogan. When you tell the Holy Spirit, now follow me what I'm about to say. When you tell the Holy Spirit to activate in your life, you're inviting trouble to come. You're inviting storms and issues to happen in your life. Because in order for the Holy Spirit to activate, you have to go through some things. Because the Holy Spirit activates to give you the power to get through what you need to go through. But you cannot get through those things or cycles or issues if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to change your mindset. Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean it's the rest of your life. People act like, just because I have a bad day, I don't feel good today, bad stuff happened to me today, my life is over. It's going to happen for every day of my life. It's going to be just like that. I'm not going to rise above this storm. The dark clouds will fall me everywhere I go like pig pit. I'm going to always have troubles in my life, and they're going to last forever. I say it all the time. Be reactive versus proactive. Proactive versus reactive. If you're going to be reactive and allow yourself to give energy to all the negative stuff and let go of being proactive. Or you're going to be proactive, stay connected to Jesus Christ in the Word through the power of the Holy Spirit and allow the power of God to show you how to respond when you have a negative day. We have issues arise in your life. You might have an infirmity come upon you. 
Doctor might say you got cancer. Doctor might say you got leukemia. Doctor might say you got rheumatoid arthritis. You got this, you got that. Instead of giving power to the doctor report, go into the scriptures and find every scripture that identifies with healing. Begin to pray that word of yourself. Speak that word to yourself. If you have to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, self, today I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Self, today the word says to me, that the Lord my God in the midst of me is mighty to save and he will deliver. Tell yourself, self, today the word of God says, Jehovah spoke to his people and I'm the Lord my God that healeth thee. You got to tell yourself yes. to counteract the thoughts of Jezebel, of insecurities, Thoughts of failure and spiritual suicide. Yes. And tell yourself, I will arise above it all. Because I'm trusting the Lord God Jehovah, who never left me nor forsaken me. And he promised to be me even to the very end of the world. You got to tell yourself that today, whatever sin in my life, whatever issue I'm dealing with, I'm letting go of it. I'm no longer holding on to the pit. Pitfalls of despair. The day of Christ, I cried to the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from going down to the pit. I was at the verge of sinking to a dark place. But I called unto the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So you got to tell yourself what God says about you. Let's go on a little further. We're going to almost close in a few minutes. If the Spirit of God pricks your heart during any of the teachings in this book, please take some private time with the Lord. Everything I've been teaching from this book is something convicts you. Is something tugging at your heart. Something's calling you out of darkness to the light. It's war you to repentance. Take private time. Get back in God's presence. Repentance always releases you to become transformed. Woo, that's good. You hear that? Repentance always releases you to become transformed. And renewed by his divine spirit. You cannot be transformed if you're not willing to repent. Because transformation is change that only takes place through repentance. The word says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by renewing of your mind. And the only way you can change your mind is to change your heart through repentance. Please do not wait until the end of the chapter to stop and talk to the Lord. Whenever the Holy Spirit prompts, when he's tugging at you, he's pulling you, he's drawing you, he's baiting you to come back, take a few moments and discuss your situations with him. Repent and pray. You hear that? Repent and pray. When we repent, the Lord is merciful and he's quick to forgive. Only when you're quick to repent when God will come to your rescue. He said in this word in Psalm 91, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He even talks about in that same chapter that when you about to fall and dash your foot against a stone, he dispatched angels to catch you before you fall. Isn't that something? Just when you're about to fall, the Holy Spirit got angels right there waiting on you 
to catch you in your midst of falling. Second Chronicles 7.14 We all know the scripture. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, yes. forgive their sins, and heal the land. Your healing is attached to repentance. Your healing is attached to the transformation that takes place through repentance. When you make up your mind and you tell God I had enough. Enough is enough. I can't take it no more. God, cleanse me. Let's go a little further. We're almost done. Correction is not rejection. You, you hear that? Write that down. Correction is not rejection. When God has corrected you, it says whom he loves, he chastens, the father chases the son. That means he punishes, he scourges to make you better. When God corrects, he does not reject. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 12. His desire for, uh, is for us to fulfill our destinies. It is Satan who wants us to feel rejected. Who desires to steal blessings, inheritance, and destinies. You hear that? God does not reject you through correction. Satan wants you to feel rejected. When you feel condemned like God don't care, that God is judging, he's punishing you. He wants to kill you. God wants to give you that fatal blow to wipe you out forever. That's not true. That's a lie from the devil. We just read he's merciful. God is compassionate. He's loving. He's kind on it. He's forgiving. He corrects the ones he loves. But he says the ones, I said this last week, if God didn't correct you, he said you're not a his. You're a bastard child. A child born out of wedlock. That means you have no father. No, no covenant father. That's what a bastard child is. One who has no covenant father in marriage. But one thing about God, even in that state and situation in your life, if a child comes to him who's born out of wedlock, spiritually, spiritual wedlock, even physical wedlock, his arms are wide open. He's still waiting to receive you. He said, love and care about you. I encourage you to take a few moments and list different ways Satan has applied pressure. Remember we talked about this a few weeks ago? How Satan applies pressure to you to force you to do what he wants you to do? To turn your ears from hearing God's voice? So the pressure, he squeezed you in a demonic system to stop you from moving forward. He wants to get you to the place in yourself where you stop seeing what God sees, hearing what God hears, and doing what God wants you to do. He applies the pressure. Then repent for believing his lies and submitting to his tactics by praying the prayer below. So we're going to pray this prayer together. Okay? So if you write down in different ways, Satan applies the pressure to your life. As I mentioned earlier, make a list of things, if you have to, of the things Satan has done to entice you and bait you to destroy you. Repent for it. Ask God to forgive you and to cleanse you. And watch God change things in your life. So I want you to pray this simple prayer with me tonight. It's from the book. It says, Heavenly Father, I need your Holy Spirit to lead me into all truth. Say it like you mean it. Heavenly Father, we call on our Father tonight. I need you 
I need your Holy Spirit to lead me into all truth. I am determined, point to yourself, tell yourself, I am determined never to allow my inheritance to be stolen. It is my desire to fulfill my entire destiny and experience a life of fullness and increase. I lay aside every fear that might tie me to my past. I let go of it. I choose not to give heed to the lies of the enemy. I am determined to be mature, be a mature believer and grow past all childish thoughts and actions. Forgive me for every area where I have given place to control and manipulation and the influence of Jezebel's spirit. I close every door to Satan. Let's say it again. I close every door to Satan. From this day forward, I choose not to listen to the lies of the enemy. I let go of all bitterness from unjust treatments. I let go of all bitterness, all anger, all resentment, all hatred from undressed treatment. I put on the full arm of God, which protects me from the enemy's evil plan of destruction. I claim the promises in Psalms 91 verse 14 to 15, which states that because I set my love on you, you will deliver and set me on high. I can trust that as I call upon your holy name, you will answer me. You will be with me in the times of troubles. You will answer me. You will be with me in the times of trouble. Deliver me and honor me in the name of Jesus. Amen. What a powerful prayer that is. If you need to go back and revisit that prayer, and listen to it again, and repeat it again, get this lesson from tonight. It'll be on YouTube. If you don't have, have Facebook, those who might see it to, uh, later on, you share it with them on Facebook. It'll be on YouTube and share it with them. And I guarantee, when you pray that prayer, that prayer you're going to feel the power of God radiating in your heart. Through the power of repentance, we just pray. And you'll feel the restoration taking place in your heart. Because you have set your love on God. And he promises to never leave you nor forsake you. But to deliver you and honor you and, and, and give you the power to overcome in every area of your life. Amen, amen, amen. Whatever you have experienced... God is able to redeem your past. Whatever you have experienced, God is able to redeem your past. So don't get stuck in the past, failures, mistakes, thoughts, relationships, issues, same old bad habits from the past. We just closed the door to the past. And we're going to walk in freedom. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. So tonight we made a choice. We prayed that prayer to move forward in the freedom that's found in Jesus Christ our Lord. And I pray you do not allow yourself to go backwards 
to your vomit from this day forward. But allow the Lord to continue to lead you through the power of the Holy Spirit to become more and more powerful to defeat the adversary in your life. Don't be discouraged and stop reading this book. If you got this book, keep reading it. You will become even more empowered to defeat the enemy as you continue to move forward. Check this out. Into greater revelation. The revealing of the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. The rainbow word that God speaks to you from the lessons that God has you read in this book. Allow the Holy Spirit to condition your mindset to be conformed to His will, His plan, and His purpose. That you move in the power of the Holy Spirit to settle, to camp out, to dwell, to pitch tent in your freedom that's found in Jesus Christ our Lord. We're going to close right here tonight. We're going to start in the next chapter 3 next week. Chapter 3. We're making our way through this book. There's several chapters in this book. I might do the chapter 3 and, and end it in that. And then you have to read the rest of the book yourself. You're on the court. You start something else. So I've been teaching this for quite a while. I pray, I pray it's been blessing you. It's been blessing me. It's been enriching me in my knowledge and understanding of the heart that we have in Christ Jesus and how we are not to be influenced by the enemy. So I pray you stay encouraged. Be excited about Jesus and know that you are a winner. You are an overcomer. God has made you a conqueror and not to be conquered. We walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. You are the just. You're called by God to live by faith. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but love upon us all mine. You got to believe that for yourself. Thy word have a hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You got to know that for yourself. When David wrote that Psalm 119 11, he said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because when you get the word in your heart and you try to sin, the Holy Spirit brings the word back up through your mindset. To remind you who you are in Christ Jesus. So you would not sin. So I pray you be encouraged tonight. Let the word be a lamp to your feet. And a light into your pathway. And I guarantee when the word lights up your pathway. You'll see the strategies. you start seeing the plan of the enemy. you start seeing the influence and the negativity of the enemy. And you would know how to defeat them through the power of the Word of God. Amen, 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 amen. I pray this has blessed you tonight, has blessed myself. It's been enriching to me. I thank God for this lesson, chapter 2. Chapter 2 has been a very inspirational chapter in this book. It's been taking a while to get, just to chap, get through chapter 2, but you know what? I'm glad I'm taking my time to do this because it's helping me become more keen and more knowledgeable of the spirits that we're dealing with, which is Jezebel. We got to know our enemy. We got to know how to defeat our enemy. We got to know how to overcome our enemy. We got to know how to defeat our own fleshly desires and how to live in the power of the Holy Spirit in freedom. So I pray that you continue to study the Word of God, show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the Word of Truth. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that you make sweet melody in your heart to the Lord. Because you both have a song in your heart to the Lord. The Lord said, make sweet melody in your heart to the Lord. Because when you get the word in you, it gives you such a joy and a satisfaction to just want to lavish God with song. Amen. So I pray you continue to be blessed. So Father, I thank you for this lesson tonight. I pray that you have my Father upon deaf ears. But it's convicted all of our hearts to change. To cause us to come to a place of examining ourselves to see where we are in our faith, O oh God, that we walk in the promise of your word, knowing that this is the victory to overcome the world, even our faith. 
that we stand fast in liberty Christ made us free. I thank you, Lord God, for being good and merciful to us, your children. Ask Father God that you be glorified in our lives tonight as we walk in the direction of the leash of the Holy Spirit in your truth and your righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen again, amen, amen, amen. Amen. As we do each week, those who might see this lesson later on, never accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. The Lord loves you. He cares about you. He doesn't want you to perish, but he wants us all to repent and turn our lives over to him. And you can do this by this simple prayer. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Ask, Lord God, that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You just got born again. You might have been a backslider and prayed that prayer. You just got restored. Because God is married to the backslider. He said he will abundantly pardon your backsliding ways. That's how much he loves us all. He loves us so much. He doesn't want either any one of us or any either one of us to die and go to hell. Because if you don't have Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you're going to die and go to hell. And you can change that direction just through that prayer we just prayed by accepting his son to become the Lord and Savior of your life. And then your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. It said your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Charles Emery, Shonda Cole, Deborah Cole, Denise Cole, Terry Edwards, Jesse Edwards, Cornell Rogers, Cornell Anderson. All our names written in the Book of Life. Many names. Joseph Harris, written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Isn't that something? All our names are written in his book when we accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of our life. Eric Middleton, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Isn't that something? Your name, uh, Monique Cole, is in the Book of Life. The moment you make a decision to stop making excuses for serving the Lord, for not serving the Lord the way you should, he says he restored you as if you never even fell. And that's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I, I pray you all have enjoyed this lesson tonight. And if you stay excited about Jesus, know that God loves you, cares about you. He's on your side as the reigning king. Amen. Amen. Anyone got any questions tonight? Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Minister Joe. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you all for your comments tonight, too. If this lesson has been a blessing to you, you saw those Facebook stars as well to support the ministry, the Facebook stars. It adds up to money for the ministry. And every seed that's been sown, I get right back to the church. I get right back to the church. And that's, that's a promise I, I made to myself that when God blessed me, I blessed the ministry. And that's how I get the books. When people need a book, the money they sow into the ministry through the Bible class, I order the books with that money and put it right back in the church. Amen. So I pray you have been inspired tonight. You've been blessed of God and know that God loves you, cares about you. He's on your side as a reigning king. You stay encouraged and know that God is there to help you get through any situation, any issue you may face. Even going through sorrow and grief and pain and heartaches and brokenness. Continue that the Holy Spirit leads you in the victory and to heal your brokenness and bind your wounds. Amen. So keep my family lifted up in prayer and my daughter's family lifted up in prayer as we lay her, her grandmother down to rest on this coming Saturday, March 8th. I mean, 9th, March 9th. March 9th. As we uh, lay her, her, her grandmother down to rest this coming Saturday, we Keep us in your prayers because I tell you it is a devastating moment and a heart-wrenching moment because she was a beautiful, loving person who loved God's people and would give the shirt off her back for anybody. That's how much she loved people. I met her 
years ago, my daughter was just a baby. I met her. And before I even, uh, she was even born, I met I met her, met her through her mother, uh, Pamela Jones. So keep Pamela, Evangelist Pamela Jones in prayer, you know, which is her mother that had passed away. And my daughter's grandmother. So you, you all keep us in your prayers and you all stay encouraged and stay excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Jesus lead you. And I guarantee when he leads, he will not lead you into a place of darkness, but he will always lead you in the light of truth. And may you all have a good night. Anyone got any questions before we go? Any, any other comments you want to share before we go? Amen. i give you a second if anybody want to write a comment or something you want to say before we go tonight. But the link to my YouTube channel is attached to the comment section of the page on tonight. So go back and revisit the lesson from last week. If you want to watch the one from tonight, it'll be on there within an, within an hour. It'll be on there as well. So any lesson uh, that I've been teaching as well as the radio shows I've been doing for the last almost five years now, I pray that bless you as well. So share it with somebody else. Share it. Share it with somebody else. Pray for me and the surgery. So, amen. Amen. I want to lift up a prayer for my brother Joe right now. His wife also, uh, she had broke her fingers in an accident um, uh, uh, about a few weeks ago. We were pray for healing for her and pray for Minister Joe have a surgery soon. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, for the anointing to flow upon my brother, oh God, when he goes for the surgery, oh God, to have surgery, his wife, even in her situation, with her hands, oh God. We pray healing to flow by your spirit, God. We counsel every assignment of the enemy, oh God, that come to kill, still and destroy. Father God, we pray all be well, that you will be glorified. You sent your word, oh God, to heal them and deliver them. We're standing in faith, believing as brothers and sisters in Christ, oh God, that it shall be done by faith, oh God. As we call upon the name of the Lord, we're calling in power and faith, believing that your word will manifest, O oh God, to bring full recovery and restoration in their situation. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my brother. You stay encouraged. God's got you. He's got you. You know, he's, he's, he's there for you. The rubber band stomach surgery is affecting my breathing and just find out. Okay. Amen. Amen. Well, you're healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. You stay encouraged, my brother, you know, and keep me informed. Let me know what's going on, and I'm here for you. And let me know what day the surgery going to be. You know, you call me later and give me the info, and I'll, I'll either plan to come join you there, you know, as a support, and I will definitely keep you in my prayers, all right? You all be blessed. Continue to keep praying for one another. Pray for one another. Amen. Y'all see these comments on here tonight and you need somebody to pray for. God, touch your heart to pray for them. Pray for them. Okay? Pray for them. Because we all need prayer. The prayer of the righteous man avail as much. We all know the scripture says, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. That he will pray for him. He committed sin. The sin be forgiven him. So we know the word of God. So we're going to keep praying for one another. All right? You all have a blessed night. Shalom. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep, bless, make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift the countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week, 6 o'clock hour, the Lord says the same. We'll be back again. Same channel, same station on Facebook. You all stay excited about Jesus. Know that God loves you, and so do I. Have a good night.